Hello and welcome back to my channel. Today we will be covering chapter 26.1, Carbonyl Compounds. By the end of this video, you should be able to name ketones and aldehydes, understand how aldehydes and ketones are produced, draw mechanisms of carbonyl compounds with NaBH4 and HCN. Carbonyl compounds contain the C double bond O functional group. This bond is polar, meaning that carbonyls react with nucleophiles. You should remember from earlier chapters that nucleophiles are electron donators. There are lots of different carbonyl groups, for example, ketones, aldehydes, carboxylic acids, esters, acyl chlorides and acid anhydrides. Don't worry, you'll be meeting these as we go through chapter 26. First off, aldehydes. They have the functional group CHO. What this means is the C double bond O is at the end of a carbon chain. They have the suffix AL. So we have methanol, propanol, butanol, ethanol, the aldehyde group is the highest priority. We call the carbon with the aldehyde group on carbon 1. We use this for reference when naming. The first thing that we do when we're naming aldehydes is count the number of carbons. You should remember from previous organic chemistry that a chain with one carbon has to stem methane, 2 ethane, 3 propane and 4 butane. In the example on the far left of the screen, it has one carbon, therefore we know it has the stem methane. It only has the aldehyde group, therefore it has the name methanol. In the second example, we count the carbons. It has three. We look for the aldehyde group, and it has no other functional groups, therefore it has the name propanol. The third example is a little bit different. We use a skeletal formula here. But first thing we do is we count the carbons. It has four. It has the aldehyde group, but also another functional group, a methyl group. We need to include both of these. The aldehyde group has priority. That's carbon number one. Therefore, the methyl group is on carbon number three. We can call the compound 3-methyl-butanol. And finally, example number 4 is a little bit different. But first we count the number of carbons. There are 5. Therefore, it has the stem pentan. It has two aldehyde groups, so we call it pentandiol. Ketones contain the functional group CO. This means there is a carbon double bond O in the middle of a compound. All ketones have the suffix "-one". Here, the ketone group is the highest priority, meaning all compounds with a ketone group should end in "-one". The first thing we do when we're naming ketones is count the number of carbons. In the first example, on the far left of the screen, there are three carbons. The ketone group is in the middle of the compound, but when there's three carbons, it can't go anywhere else, otherwise it'll become an aldehyde. We call it propanone. In the second example though, there are a lot more carbons. If we count them, there are six. Therefore, there are lots of different places the ketone group could go. We have to specify in our answer. If we count from the side that gives us the smallest number, we can see that the ketone group is on carbon number 3. Therefore, we will name this compound hexan 3 ohn In the last example, it's a bit more complicated, but first we count the number of carbons. There are 5, therefore we know our answer is going to contain pentan. We count the ketone group. It's on the second carbon in, so our end of our answer is going to be pentan 2 own but now we just have to deal with this methyl group. Counting from the ketone, we can see 
that this methyl group is actually on carbon number four. We are going to name the compound 4 methyl pentan 2 ohm. Both ketones and aldehydes are involved in oxidation and reduction reactions. You should be aware of some of these from year one organic chemistry. The oxidizing agent we use is acidified potassium dichromate. The reduction agent is NaBH4 slash H2O. The left hand side of this organic synthesis map represents a primary alcohol which can be distilled to produce an aldehyde and reflux to produce a carboxylic acid. An aldehyde can be produced to a primary alcohol and a primary alcohol can be oxidized straight to a carboxylic acid. On the other side, there is a secondary alcohol. A secondary alcohol can be refluxed to produce a ketone. A ketone can be reduced to produce a secondary alcohol. The first mechanism we need to be aware of is the reduction reaction with NaBH4. This can be done with aldehydes and ketones, but the reaction is the same. First, the lone pair of electrons from the hydride ion and H- ion is attracted to the delta positive carbon atom in the aldehyde or ketone. It is this H- ion that comes from the NaBH4. A dative covalent bond is formed between the hydride ion and the carbon atom of the C double bond O. The pi bond in the C double bond O breaks by heterolytic fission, forming a negatively charged intermediate. The oxygen atom of the intermediate donates a lone pair of electrons to a hydrogen atom in water molecules. The intermediate has then been protonated to form an alcohol. An OH- group remains from the water molecule. A key word here was heterolytic fission. This is when a covalent bond breaks and one atom takes both of the electrons, forming a minus ion. You will often be asked to draw out this mechanism in the exam, so it's worth getting familiar and memorising it. The other reaction is one with a hydrogen cyanide molecule. The lone pair of electrons from the cyanide ion is attracted and donated to the delta positive carbon atom in the aldehyde or ketone. A dative covalent bond forms. Pi bond in the carbon double bond O breaks by heterolytic fission, forming a negatively charged intermediate. The intermediate is protonated by donating a low pair of electrons to a hydrogen ion to form the product. This product is a hydroxynitrile. A key word here was protonated. This just means to gain a proton or a hydrogen ion. Again, you need to get familiar with this reaction. Mm.